One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for net. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And before we jump into this video, a uh, well, bam, ladies and gentlemen, your boy finally has some merchandise. I spent a majority of the day yesterday building a lot of merch. So we got tank tops, we got shirts. We got socks, we got sweatshirts. Uh, some of these will be altered a little bit, such as the tank top and the socks. Those will be altered before everything goes on sale. Everything will be on sale on Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you save the link to the Shop of Treep Talks over on teespring.com so you can snag yourself up some original First time ever, Treeb Talks merchandise, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine how cool you would look wearing a sweatshirt with my face on it, with my logo on the back, and we are starting to build a logo too, ladies and gentlemen. We are trying, we are trying to do that. Uh, you know, we got, we got, we got some things in the work, in the works, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this profile picture won't just be me and my Jags gear for much longer. We gotta build a brand, so we gotta build a logo. And once we get this logo made, it'll be on a shirt as well. So this shop has me feeling really, really optimistic, ladies and gentlemen. And OTAs have started for some NFL teams today, so that officially means that the NFL season is underway. And since I'm such an optimistic guy, I like to give an optimistic point of view. And that's what I'm going to be doing today for all 16 AFC teams, ladies and gentlemen. And I will be doing the NFC tomorrow. And this is why every AFC team needs to feel optimistic. Starting things off with the AFC East, the New England Patriots. The reason they need to feel optimistic is because they just won the Super Bowl. Tom Brady is still in the building, and even though Rob Gronkowski retired, I think they got a good replacement in Austin Safarian Jenkins, and if they aren't comfortable with that man taking his spot, they could go to the draft and draft one of these very, very impressive tight ends. I'm sure one of the good ones will be available by the time they pick, either Irv Smith Jr. or maybe even Noah Faint and even TJ Hawkinson if he makes it all the way down there. But the Patriots always, always have reason to be optimistic. Now the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins, what do they have to be optimistic about? They have to be optimistic about the fact that they might be drafting a new quarterback. You know, Tyrod Taylor, I don't think is going to be their starting quarterback this season. I think they're going to be going out trying to make a big move and draft one of these premier rookie quarterbacks. So you got to be excited for the future, Miami. You got to be excited whether you land like a Haskins or a Murray. You know, it's going to suck if you land like a Danielle Jones, but you just got to be, you know, on your toes, be a little bit optimistic. I wish the Jags were going that route and drafting a young man and developing him and going through the trials and tribulations of it, but um, at the same time, maybe I don't, but you guys are going to be getting a new rookie quarterback, and that is going to be your man no matter what. You guys are going to defend him. Trust me, I know that's how Jags fans were with Blake Bortles. The Buffalo Bills. The Bills seem to think that this might be their time. They might be the most underrated team in the NFL, and I think the swagger inside the locker room is something that is gonna that the Bills and Bills fans need to feel optimistic about. They're very optimistic about quarterback Josh Allen, even though I personally don't see it. But, I mean, like I said, if you're going to hype up your rookie quarterback, hype up your rookie quarterback. So they're going to be hyping up Josh Allen. And I think with the fan support and how much they believe in their Buffalo Bills, they could do something. You guys should be optimistic about that. And last but certainly not least, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking the New York Jets. The Jets have Le'Veon Bell. They have an elite run game now. They have an elite running back. And they got him for a lot cheaper than what he was originally asking for. So, Le'Veon Bell definitely, definitely, definitely is reason enough for the Jets fans to be excited. And then he got Sam Darnold in year two. Sam Darnold struggled a little bit in year one. Can he turn it around in year two? Again, this is the excitement of having a young quarterback. You don't know what you're going to get. Maybe Sam Darnold does turn it all the way around and has one terrific, terrific season. But the Jets are another team that are kind of under the radar. They are competing in the AFC East, so it is going to be hard. But keep your eyes out on the New York Jets. They have a lot to be optimistic about. 
Now we're going to talk about the AFC West, starting things off with the Los Angeles Chargers. Not a lot has changed for this team. This team is basically the same team they're bringing back from a year ago. So they're going to be able to compete inside the AFC West yet again. Phillip Rivers just had another kid, so you know that he's going to be, again, motivated to get to the next level. I think the Chargers are a favorite this year in the AFC. Like I said, not a lot has changed for this team, and I think that with the offensive attack along with their defensive attack that they have and they have a first round pick this year and they can address some even more positions of need in the draft such as maybe a tight end position to succeed Antonio Gates because that's weird that he's still playing which is crazy and you know now that Jason Witten came back I guess it's not really too crazy for these old tight ends to play for a while uh, but you also got Melvin Gordon in the backfield uh, Mike Williams really showed up this year Keenan Allen as well his first kind of full healthy season and if they could do that again I think they are the team to beat in the AFC in my opinion the Chiefs lost Kareem Hunt you know the Tyreek Hill situation we don't really know. So, you know, the Chiefs, they're not, they're not, they didn't get any worse per se because they still have a lot of pieces to make them a really good football team. But the Chargers, I think, in my opinion, are the favorites to win the division. And that's something to be optimistic about as well. Now, the Oakland Raiders, who are soon to be the Vegas Raiders, Mike Mayock is literally playing Madden. He traded for three first round picks. And on draft day, I wouldn't be any more excited other than if I was a Cardinals fan to see what we do at the number one pick or if I was a Raiders fan because you got three of them bitches this year three first round picks Mike Mayock a, firm, a former draft analyst draft expert and he knows how the NFL draft works so it's going to be interesting to see who three who the, who the three first round selections are going to be for the Oakland Raiders I am really really excited to see that and they also traded for the best wide receiver in the league Antonio Brown you know it's going to be interesting with those three picks if they're going to try and get a quarterback maybe like a Dwayne Haskins Kyler Murray like I say that's going to be very very intriguing very interesting and you got Derek Carr's make or break year I think he did sign a massive contract extension of course but you know John Gruden says he likes him and then he says he doesn't like him you know no one really knows what the whole morale feel is on Derek Carr so I I think this is Derek Carr's make or break year, so that is something to be excited about. Hopefully Derek Carr can succeed. For the Kansas City Chiefs, they added Tyron Matthew to replace Eric Berry, and that was a very, very good replacement. Though Tyron Matthew is getting up there in age, it's about time that he participated with a challenger for the crown. I know he uh, played with the Texans. They made the playoffs. The Cardinals made it to the NFC Championship game. But as far as a perennial Super Bowl contender, the Kansas City Chiefs are that. Even though I still think the Chargers might win the division, I think the Chiefs in playoff times, especially Patrick Mahomes, what he was able to show last year, I think this team is going to be very, very scary. And adding Tyron Matthew to that second and that defense overall is going to help this defense tremendously, tremendously, tremendously. As well as Damian Williams, the running back, has something to prove. After releasing Kareem Hunt, after unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances, Damian Williams came in and played extremely well. This is going to be his first full season as the Chiefs running backs, as the Chiefs starting running back, I should say. And it's going to be very, very interesting and very, very exciting to see what this kid can do. He has a lot to prove and a lot to show. And I think he's going to go out there and ball out and play really really good football finally the Denver Broncos Philip Lindsley entering year two no one thought this guy was going to be anything he ended up making it to the Pro Bowl and just dominated last year as an undrafted rookie everybody knows who he is now so let's see how he does in year two if he takes a step back or a step forward but either way this guy's a tremendous running back so seeing him play in general should make you optimistic and the fact that they're building this team around Philip Lindsay with this good offensive line they did address the offensive line quite a bit this offseason so opening up holes for Philip Lindsay should be the number one priority they also got a new quarterback and Mr. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is going to be coming in, the veteran, the former Super Bowl MVP. And I know this probably isn't the quarterback you guys wanted, but in any case, if you get a new quarterback, you should be excited. And that's why the Denver Broncos should be optimistic for Joe Flacco and Philip Lindsley. Coming up next, we got the AFC South, starting off with my favorite squad, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, they should be optimistic about Big Dick Nick. That's no surprise, ladies and gentlemen. They need to get out of their heads about how he was with the Rams and how he was with the Chiefs and focus on how good he was with the Philadelphia Eagles, especially because of how recent it was. This guy did 
struggle in the past, but the last couple of seasons, he won a Super Bowl and he did well in the playoffs, so you can't really knock that on Foles' game. He also has his former uh, QB coach slash offensive coordinator, John Day Filippo, in Jacksonville, so this should help Big Dick Nick succeed, and for Jags fans, they should be excited. Also, this might be the final year where all the pieces to this elite defense is going to be together. Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye, Yannick Ngakwe, Clayus Campbell, Marcel Darius, everybody. So they are going to be playing extremely, extremely hard to not only win this division, but to try and go all the way because they know that this might be the final year of Saxonville, ladies and gentlemen. The Tennessee Titans, the defense will be in the top 10. They signed veteran veteran uh, pass rusher Cameron Wake, and it is Marcus Mariota's prove it year. If Mariota wants the money and he wants the Titans, he wants to be the Titans quarterback for the long haul for the future, he needs to stay healthy and he needs to put together an impressive season. He hasn't necessarily broke through the glass ceiling just yet as a Passer, I would say as a mobile quarterback, yes, he's probably past that. He's great with his legs. He's a good playmaker. I mean, in the playoff game against the Chiefs when he deflected the ball, caught it himself, scored a touchdown. I mean, he's an athlete. He's aware, you know. But as far as being a quarterback, I don't think he has proved it to me just yet. So this is the year that he gets to prove it and to see if he can stay healthy all season and if he has reached his full, full potential. And again, this defense will be top 10, and it's going to play lights out. Next up, we got the Colts. Not a lot has changed for the Colts, and that is a good thing. And they also get a second season with healthy Andrew Luck. And that right there is a blessing for the Indianapolis Colts and Colts fans, and that alone should just make you Really, really optimistic for the season to come. And finally, we got the Houston Texans. The Texans boosted up their secondary, which was a problem last year, and I think will help them out tremendously this season. They already got a good front seven, and they just needed help in the back, and they did, and they went out and did just that, focusing on the safety position and the corners. They also got a couple of budget beasts at the corner positions, like Bareem Body Calhoun, BBC, former Brown and Jaguar player, and I think he's going to perform Excellent, excellent in Jacksonville. Deshaun Gibson, another former Jaguar who is going to be a safety holding it down for Houston. Trust me, the guy has talent. We just could not find a spot for him here in Jacksonville. Unfortunately, his contract was just a little bit too expensive for us. But Houston, I think he will play well. Deshaun Watson, another tank. He is healthy this year. Second season, healthy for Deshaun Watson. Of course, his rookie year towards ACL. Couldn't play the rest of the season. But now two full healthy seasons with Deshaun Watson. What more do you want, Houston Texans fans? You guys have a lot to be optimistic about. And last but certainly not least, the AFC North. Probably the most dramatic division in football next year. And it's going to be the funnest one to watch. We're going to start off with the Cleveland Browns. It built overnight. Their team built overnight. Baker Mayfield, a great, great draftee, along with Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward's going to be an elite corner for years and years to come. They traded for Odell Beckham Jr. They have three standout wide receivers, a solid tight end in David Njoku. They got Kareem Hunt. He won't be able to play until week eight, but that's okay because they have another young, exciting running back right there in Nick Chubb. They also got a veteran who's been around the Browns for a long, long time, and no one deserves this success more than Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson, he's been through all the trials and tribulations of the Cleveland Browns, but he is here now where they should be successful. They also have a tremendously easy, easy schedule. So an easy 10 to 12 wins for the Cleveland Browns this year and should shock the world and maybe even get a first round bye. It depends. You know, it, it is the Browns, so they could brown it. But like I said, this is optimism, and this is an optimistic video. So the Browns should be able to get between 10 to 12 wins with how easy their schedule is and how built their team is overall. Next up, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. The distractions are gone. Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, if those two were as big of a distraction as they say they are, then good. They're gone. You know, you guys won't be distracted anymore. And you know Big Ben has something to prove this year. People saying that he doesn't have it anymore. Things like that. Big Ben needs to go out there after missing the playoffs and just show why he is still 
the best probably quarterback, you know, him and Terry Bradshaw up in there, best quarterback in Pittsburgh Steelers history, and he needs to solidify it by making a run this season. Also, the rise of Juju Smith-Schuster, who will be the number one wide receiver this year and will be exciting to watch. Last year led the uh, the uh, Steelers in receiving yards, which kind of went under the radar. So he was dominant last year, has every opportunity this year to be dominant Yet again, they also got a guy I really like in James Washington. He didn't have a ter terrific uh, rookie season, but he has the potential to bounce back and be a good number two wide receiver alongside Juju Smith-Schuster. You also got the rise of James Conner. Both of these guys are replacing the distractions that were Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. I don't know why I did air quotes. They definitely were distractions. If you've seen anything with Antonio Brown's Twitter beef, I think that solidified it if you didn't believe it. So... Uh, James Conner, who put together a good year last year, and he should be able to do the same thing this year. So, though they lost two superstars, they have two superstars in the making with Juju Smith-Schuster and James Conner, and they should be very, very optimistic about that. The Baltimore Ravens, this is going to be their first full season with Lamar Jackson. Of course, Lamar came in, I believe, midway through the season, around week 7, week 8. And he played, and he did really well. And though they did lose some leaders on this defense, such as C.J. Mosley and Terrell Suggs, they did sign two huge free agents that are going to help this team. Mark Ingram, who's going to help Lamar Jackson in the run game and be able to be a reliable running back. They really did not have that last year, but now that they have Mark Ingram, who is definitely a very, very solid running back, proved it during his time in New Orleans, and basically his whole season. You know, not a lot of people like Mark Ingram for some reason, but I'm a big fan, and now that he's going to be in every down back for the Baltimore Ravens, I think he's going to be able to show his true, true potential with the squad. They also signed Earl Tom. Thomas. Earl Thomas is going to be a big help in this secondary that the Ravens really desperately needed to improve in signing a veteran and one of the best, you know, to ever do it. And Earl Thomas was a very smart move and a very good move by the Baltimore Ravens to get him on the squad. So this defensive leadership with Earl Thomas, along with Lamar Jackson coming back for a first full season, the Ravens again should be knocking on the door of a playoff berth. And finally, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, it, I had to search a little bit to find things that they could be optimistic about. One thing that I think all Bengals fans can agree with that they should be optimistic about is that Marvin Lewis is gone and it's the beginning of a new era. However, Zachary Taylor does, you know, it, you guys should all just be happy that Marvin Lewis is not in there anymore. Whether you guys be mediocre with Marvin Lewis or bad. Marvin Lewis is gone, and it's a new era and a new coach. So the Cincinnati Bengals have to be optimistic about the future going forward without Marvin Lewis. And that was why every AFC team should be optimistic heading into the 2019 season. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at True Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a video. video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them just straight facts. Also, make sure you check out the Teespring account if you want to get yourself some cheesy Treeb Talks merch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great, great day.